Hi, I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Slim Market Week. It's look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week and a look forward at what might happen in coming weeks. And hopefully, lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout this show. Well, the stock market and bond market had a volatile week this last week, marked by a surprising, to some, surge in interest rates. This couldn't happen, right? The Fed has total control, right? Well, actually, trading in stocks looked a lot like we saw in the previous week, with big sell-offs that were followed by big upside reversals. Monday was kind of a dull day, even though worldwide stocks were on the soft side, of course, waiting for Powell's testimony, which came on Tuesday. We saw the stock market soft into Powell's testimony before the Senate, uh, and then what happened was his super dubbish language uh, and his testimony brought in buyers to the market again. He said, the economy is a long way from their goals. Inflation is soft by the most part, using the word transitory. He loves that. Uh, of course, if you look at what's going on in the commodity markets, you have to wonder. And uh, he, is, of course, is committed to the full range of tools. That stimulated a rotation, and we're getting a huge one in the stock market now, is the techs, well, they were kind of weak, the stay-at-home stocks, they were soft, the ones that did so well last year, uh, and then we saw huge upside moves in energy, hotel, gaming, airlines, banks, the value stocks, uh, getting very good upside moves, that helps the Dow be a stronger index, and growth, well, that was for sale, as we saw uh, the NASDAQ lagging uh, this week. That day on Tuesday, the stock market had seen a decline of some 70 points in the S&P 500, and then there was a reversal of some 85 points, and that seems to be typically what we're seeing right now. Wednesday, there was more testimony by Powell, uh, and uh, that was uh, in the House, and I almost gagged listening to that uh, as Powell was talking about um, the uh, his inflationary uh, scenario in there, and uh, he said uh, likely to have uh, low interest rates uh, for years. Uh, and then he said the correlation between money growth and inflation is low. Can you imagine that he would say that? I mean, it just seems to me a totally bizarre statement since what he's been doing in these markets is printing at a rate that is beyond comprehension. Uh, correlations between money growth and inflation are low. What the? F well, this is the truth of what he's been doing. If you look here over these uh, decades right here, you could see that uh, money growth, the money stock annual rate of change, well, that kind of uh, moved around, especially ticking up on inflationary uh, uh, scenarios and deflationary scenarios, bringing it down around uh, recessions. Uh, and then you see what's happened in this last year. Just absolutely unbelievably incredible. Uh, as you see, just look at the top of that, uh, the right side of the page, and you can see right over here, look at that rate of change on the money growth, some up some 70% rate of change, just absolutely mind-boggling. Tell me now, uh, if anybody could explain this to me, uh, with uh, the rate of cra uh, that he is printing like a crazy man, well, then uh, what uh, what's he doing that for? I mean, if he's not looking, if he doesn't doesn't expect that we can get inflation out of this based on what he's saying. Why would he do that? I mean, it, to me, it's just mind-boggling. Uh, and, well, all of that, of course, helped the stock market on Wednesday as it moved up again. And Dow actually closed at all-time highs. Uh, is loaded with those value stocks, but the NASDAQ did continue to lag uh, badly. 
we did see uh, on uh, Thursday stocks started out weak again, but uh, the bond market collapsed. It was a horrible day for the bond market, one of the worst we've seen, especially when you look at the auction situation. The seven-year auction bid to cover was at a record low. The, the the bid to cover uh, was horrible. The tail was four basis points. I mean, there was basically no bids for this uh, very, very well-watched seven-year auction, and stocks got slammed. S&P 500 moved down over 100 points. The NASDAQ fell even more. 3% was down close to 500 points. The bonds, uh, it, bonds have big issues. I mean, it just what you look at. We call the bear market, and I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. That's the problem, big issues. Uh, how, how about massive issuance? That's what we're looking at, and we're going to discuss, uh, dis discuss that more in just a few minutes because I have a lot to tell you about that. Friday, the Treasuries rebounded, and the market was a little calmer, though still volatile. Early rally turned into a sell-off, turned into another rally, uh, and uh, the rallies, I believe, now are temporary uh, and will be met with selling. All, another indication of the liquidations that are going on in the background is gold collapsed. We turned negative on that a couple of weeks ago. We've been warning about it. Falls some 50 something dollars here on Friday. Silver was down $1.35 uh, and uh, isn't barely able to rebound. And this is the same thrashing we have seen all week long. I say uh, this uh, bull bubbly uh, background is burned uh, and the correction in the market is on. And that's what we've been looking for. Coming up, we're going to give you analysis of uh, the um, bond, this treasury market that we see, and the dollar, and gold, and the S&P 500. So we have a lot to show you coming up. So stick around, and some great offers that we have coming too. So don't speed through, because we have so much coming up here. Um, for the week, uh, the stock market uh, depends on the index you look at, uh, down like a half a percent uh, on the Dow, to down about 3% on the NASDAQ, which is much weaker as those tech stocks get sold. Uh, bond market, 30-year down about four and three-quarter points. The 10-year yields explode. They were up as much as 27 basis points to 1.61%. Right now on Friday, they've gotten a little better, uh, up about 17 basis points on the week, trading at about 1.51%. And uh, when you look at it, I mean, at 1.6%, that's quadrupling uh, off of the lows that we saw, about 40 basis points in the panic last March, April. Gold market um, down about $60 on the week. It was mostly on Friday. Silver market, which basically has been much stronger, still loses a dollar on the week pretty big loss. The dollar gains about a half a percent on the week. Uh, of course, higher rates uh, do in the U.S. here are attracting money, and that's why the dollar is firming, uh, and also a safety bid coming in based on the weaker equity markets, and based on the cyclical patterns, which I will show you, it's basically time uh, for that to happen. So we're uh, seeing the potential for a dollar rally not a massive one, but I'll show you that as we get into uh, the later in the show. Oil market uh, up about $3, uh, really surging this week, and that's with the commodities, which have had these massive gains, and that should be stalling now uh, as uh, we get the dollar now in a time where we think it's going to be firming. Uh, of course, that would mean the euro is weakening. If you follow my analysis in the Future Speak show on Wednesdays, uh, where I talk about all the foreign exchange. So uh, that's uh, a uh, the beginning of what is going to be a show that is jam-packed here. So lots to tell you about. Make sure that you go to the Slim website uh, and explore our, our, our site. There's so much there uh, for you to see. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do subscribe to this channel. Click the notification bell and you'll know when we put out videos. I think we put out five or six this week. Been an active week for us. Uh, and make sure you like this video. Give it a thumbs up. Uh, put polite comments on there if you have comments and criticisms. And follow us on Twitter at Ask Slim. Uh, you want more information about Ask Slim? Uh, membership info services, you can write to Matt at AskSlim.com. 
Also want to announce that it's the final three days. We've been running this level three trial. You can see all the fantastic things that we have on here. Our simulator ranking systems, trade ideas, SIR daily snapshot, uh, SIR live stream. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Uh, because we have another special coming up for level two. Chart streams live, our weekly stock index report, weekly ETF report, Slimulator Momentum Tracker, an amazing app. You just have to see it to believe it. The uh, Aslim uh, video library uh, with uh, over uh, 600 videos in there now, uh, and also uh, our new uh, workbench where you could do all of your trade planning. Uh, you want details on this, write Matt at AskSlim.com. Uh, and please go to our website if you want to subscribe. One third off right now. Uh, and uh, this will be the last time that you'll be able to get this at this pricing. Uh, we have so much going on. Our prices are going to get nudged up a little bit. So please do take advantage of this at this pricing. Just absolutely fantastic stuff. All right. So now we're going to continue in here. Let's talk about this treasury market. Um, there seems to have been a disturbance in the force uh, with that uh, terrible um, seven-year auction that we saw with demand so unbelievably low. All of a sudden, um, it appears uh, that interest rate spike is upsetting the markets. Even though we're getting a little bit of a rebound in the stock market here on Friday, uh, that uh, uh, probably won't last long, and this interest rate uh, uptick is a concern. Of course, we live in this world uh, of uh, that's built on debt, uh, fiat currency. Fiat means by government decree. They say it has value, uh, and uh, that means that they can uh, do anything they want with it because it's government decree. Um, the market that we're living in right now, uh, the economy we're living in right now, built on debt. It's a world we're going to hand over to our kids and grandkids. I'm always extremely critical of this, and it is so annoying. Here are the four people responsible for this uh, Fed that we have right now. Of course, the, look at that young Greenspan, the activist Fed right there. It, well, he created it, and that was followed by Bernanke and Yellen and now Powell. Somehow Powell has just fallen into this, uh, and now that we have a Treasury Secretary of the Yellen, quite a team where they can uh, just keep growing the money uh, on that magic money tree that you see this debt bomb uh, could explode at any time if it's not exploding already. Look at that money growing on the tree. MMT, could you ever believe that that uh, could be adopted here in this world? Well, that's where we are right now. Uh, the perpetual motion machine, you can grow all the money you want on these trees and it'll never matter. Well, until all of a sudden the bond market can't take all these issuances anymore and that's what you end up with. This is a, 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 a situation here that um, I believe that what we're seeing is the beginning of the central banks, and specifically talking about the U.S. central bank, losing control of the market. And uh, is this debt bomb exploding? Is this seven-year auction the beginning of that? Uh, how could they possibly believe in that magic money tree that keeps growing as much money as they want to print? Well, enough of that. You get the idea looking at that. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to look at some charts as we look at the um, treasury market, the um, look at interest rates, and we'll look at the TLT, uh, which is the 20-year bond uh, ETF, which a lot of people trade. So we thought that was the right one to look at as we get into the charts. Here is the first chart that I want to show you right now, and that is... Uh, the 10-year Treasury index yield. And you can see we're looking here back to about 2000. So we're looking at 21, 22 years. Let me explain this chart to you. I showed this chart back uh, two months ago when we did our year-end show and talked about the fact that we had projected at that time that interest rates would go up to 1.5 to 1.9% 1 by 2022. You can see that right there. This was all on the chart. Let me explain to you what we're looking at. These are cycle brackets on the bottom for those of you that are new to our style of analysis. Well, where they uh, a small cycle or minor cycle and the dominant cycle bottom is where you often get big advances. You can see that here. 
we we created green zones in here so that you could see that we uh, that's where you get these big upside moves in yields. And uh, we thought that you know it'd be six to twenty-eight months, which is the a long a long range of time that you get these advances, and they're at least fifty percent. Uh, retracements of the loss. So we had projected coming up hip, up here to about 1.9%, uh, but the truth is is that if you look at this downward channel right over here, that's 2.5%, and uh, there's a possibility that it will follow that track right over there. So let's just take a closer look in here, as you could see, that we had, uh, here we were at the end of the year saying that it was likely to have that kind of a move, and it happened exactly. We declared a bear market here uh, in uh, the uh, treasury market and it is clear to us that that's what we have. The Fed is no longer going to be able to push these rates down for any period of time. They will potentially try yield uh, curve control. They're not going to be able to do that but we are in this rising period for yields that we believe is going to go right into the end of the year and it is possible we will see two and a half percent. Uh, as uh, yield. Now we say possible. Our target was 1.9 and we think we're easily going to get to that target sometime this year. I'll show you a little bit more about that when as I look at the TLT chart and I think you will find it extremely interesting. So here is the weekly chart in TLT. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and you can see the cyclical patterns in here. Uh, there are three cycles in each of these what's called harmonic families. If you want to learn about cycle analysis, please go to AskSlim.com and go to the workshop page. And we have a lot there that you can learn about uh, by watching a little video there. So there are one, two, three cycles in each of those harmonic families. And uh, right now, uh, what, what, how these measure out are 22, 44, and 88 weeks. 22, 44, and 88 weeks. When there is a nesting, you get a pretty big decline, as you see right over there. And it is moving down into the next nesting. Two cycles nesting here, three were nesting right over there. And that's where you get the biggest period of risk. We had talked about, this has been here for a long period of time, that January through March were the biggest period of risk. And that's essentially what we have seen right in here as January through March, we're getting this, well, right now it's February, big decline. We are projecting down here to about 134 in the TLTs, which is this super major 61.8% of FIB extension. What that means is that it's taking, uh, it's taking a measurement from way back here at an important bottom, and that's really the target right over here. And here in the middle of April is where that target really looks to us uh, like it's pointing to. So uh, when you look at these bigger patterns, and that's this one right over here. So because this pattern right over here, that blue one, is already negative, when it broke underneath this level at 153, we warned that it was a major top in place. It suggested a bear market, and you got this big break. Uh, I want to make sure you could see that very clearly, that below there it suggested that it was a negative market and you'd get a big break. So now what we're looking at now is the bigger pattern right in here. And what we want to do is see the date, and that takes you out to 2022. What that says to us is that the bear market is on and the bear market in the uh, treasury market will go into 2022 at least. And uh, if that's the case, we're gonna see much higher interest rates. And if that's the case, well, probably the stock market is not going to like that. And of course, if you look at our year end show, uh, we talk about the stock market entering a bear market at some point this year, and that's in alignment with what we're looking at here. So the weekly pattern suggests a further decline for about the next month and then a rebound in here in the uh, treasury market. I'm going to show you the shorter term pattern right over here, and there was actually a minor bottom due right over here. It's a little bit late. That's why it says shift. And what that says to us is that you're likely to get a rebound now as the stock market begins to struggle. And this rebound takes you up to about 146. If the stock market gets hit hard, that would, that's, that would be where it would go. 
but then we believe in this resistance zone is where it fails and then begins to move down again. So a minor couple of weeks potential bounce here in the TLT, but really that's dominated by this big negative situation right over here. And I want you to see our momentum indicator, which turned negative right at this point and has been, it went flat here and then negative again. And that has been a fantastic indicator on the weekly chart. And this is our uh, indicator here on the daily chart, which on the bottom is the, this is our slim ribbon indicator right in here, which is the best momentum indicator you'll ever see. And add to that the signal indicator, the slim ribbon PO, and it continues to give you the sell warnings that you can see right in here. And this has been fantastic. So TLT has been exceptionally negative. If you want to get the slim ribbon PO, you have to be a level four member and have think or swim. TD Ameritrade. So you can open up a TD Ameritrade account through our website, and then we get credit for that. So decline in the treasury market we're looking for uh, over the next month that we see, and uh, any rally that we get now in a rebound is likely to be temporary. Uh, and then interest rates moving up again, or the uh, uh, the treasuries moving down again in a very, very significant way. Um, for the time uh, being right now, the worst may be over for the bond market as we look at this and that temporary bid as this, uh, as this, this safety bid comes in. But then again, into April, um, the treasuries could move down very sharply, and that could hurt the stock market. We'll talk more about that moving forward. All right, so now we're going to do a dollar quickie in here. Multiple time frame analysis. I'm going to switch over in here uh, as we switch this to dollar sign DXY. I'm going to try to keep this into 60 seconds. This you can see in the dollar, the uh, beautiful cyclical patterns. We expected a decline into this period. It bottomed a little early. We didn't think that the recent softness was going to continue. We could see the dollar rebounding in here. We're projecting up to a level of about 92 though if the stock market gets absolutely slammed and interest rates go up a lot it could get up here into the 94s but we're looking right now for a move up here to about 92 when you look at that in on the weekly pattern when I look at the daily pattern there's a compound inverted head and shoulders right in here I know this is a messy chart there's a lot to look at right there but you can see that this cycle was due to bottom right over here and look at that upward spike in the dollar that's killing the gold market and as we said this projection up here to 92 these major resistances that you could see right over there is pretty reasonable so we're likely to see this move into the dollar in this safety bid that we're looking at right over here so the dollar that's your dollar quickie uh, we really see that there is a likelihood that we're going to see um, some continued upside in the dollar. That's going to probably mean weaker commodities as they begin to correct. Let's do a little quickie in the gold market right now as we switch over here and look at forward slash GC. This is really super interesting when we look at this because we had talked about the fact that the dollar's pattern in here was breaking down and we've been warning and warning. Once it got under this level right over here, it suggests a major top. It did that two weeks ago as we put out the warning. It's coming down to that support here around 1692. It probably is going to get support there and then get a rally back into this area somewhere around 1800. But then there is a ton of risk over here. Um, we uh, have uh, been really strength, uh, stressing the, the weakness in here. Uh, you can see in here that we put a note in here. To, uh, monthly cycle patterns have peaked. We revised this. Intermediate patterns have peaked, which is really bad. This wave down should be down to uh, 1692. Uh, and then the next wave down here to about 19, uh, 1587 down over there. Uh, the ultimate bottom does not come until November. Here is your daily pattern right in here and all kinds of breakdowns. You can see that uh, period right there where we expected the decline. It rallied and then gave us a breakdown under 1784 and gave us all of these warnings. Uh, it's probably could rally into these resistance areas. This top one right over here is 1800 uh, and then down again. Look at the slim ribbon PO giving you those sell signals and warnings in here and the slim ribbon right in here all of that negative volatility uh, all of that negative 
negative momentum, giving you these warnings, as you could see in here. You want to uh, learn more about uh, this analysis, please do go to AskLim.com workshops, and you will see some great information in there so that you can learn that. Just absolutely fantastic. Coming up, we're going to give you our analysis of the stock market. But first, you got to see this. Don't scroll forward. If you really want to have an unbelievable opportunity to learn about our type of analysis that we do and see some of our great stuff for almost no money, this is the opportunity. This is our level two trial membership. We are starting this right now for new subscribers. This will not last long and this is the last time we will have this pricing right now. What this includes is the stock index report live stream that you can see. What this, what that is, is live uh, right on your, your computer. You don't need a special platform of the S&P 500, NASDAQ and Russell. I'll show you that in a moment. Our stock index report, uh, which we uh, put out every day, the snapshot, the SIR, you'll get that every single day. You'll get our weekly stock index report, our weekly ETF review, Slimulator Momentum Tracker, which is per, for position traders and investors, over a thousand different uh, uh, stocks that you could look at, ETFs. Uh, with our algorithms built into it for with momentum conditions you're going to see fantastic stuff in there just amazing you'll get our complete library 600 plus videos in nine categories that I've done teaching all kinds of aspects and showing all kinds of analysis in the stock market and our new trader workbench for trade planning absolutely amazing what's more amazing you'll get all of that for $22.50 the first month there are even bigger discounts if you take quarterly discounts. How can you possibly pass this, especially if you're an active trader? Just go to AskSlim.com, top of the main page. You'll see the special link there, and you'll be able to sign up for the one month or for the quarterly. Or if you have questions uh, about that or have an issue with that link, then write to Matt at AskSlim.com. Let me show you just some examples of what is in here. Just absolutely mind-boggling. This is the SIR live stream. Now, this was from the uh, 24th. This was from Wednesday, uh, the 24th. And uh, this is for our intraday charts, uh, really, for short-term trading. These are 15-minute charts of the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Russell. What it has on here is what we call our reversal scout. This helps you with your directional decisions. And when it turns up, which it did the day before, you generally get upside moves. You're going to get our resistance uh, levels right in here, and you're going to get our, uh, these are called acceleration zones, the yellow ones. The probability when they enter the uh, acceleration zone that they will continue is extremely high. You can get the numbers from that if you want. And once it gets in there, you can see it just explodes through. This is how you catch the big trades. And uh, sometimes when it dips, it dips right into the support, as you could see right there and right there. Just absolutely great. And you can also see which are the strongest and weakest of these indexes, which was really clear as the NASDAQ was the weakest and the Russell was the strongest. And you could see that. Uh, it's incredible. That is what you saw on the up day on Wednesday. How about the down day on Thursday? Let's take a look right over here. And yes, what happened was the uh, we got this early downturn here in the um, reversal scout, and it went down all day long through all of those zones right over there. Just absolutely incredible through the acceleration zones where you catch the biggest trades and then got into this area but it was late in the day and couldn't even turn around uh, as you can see that so just fantastic information here how about uh what's going on today let's put it up live right now for you to see here you go this is now live on my screen and we started out the date choppy moving down but then when the reversal scout turned up you can see what happened and it came up right to resistance, and you're getting some resistance right over there. Move, you get the NASDAQ moving up through those acceleration zones. Beautiful. Hits the resistance. Now pulling down. But you could see what's going on. What's the weakest index right now? Clearly the Russell. So if you wanted to be doing a pair trade, well, you would probably be buying NASDAQ today and shorting Russell. If you wanted to just buy and you didn't know which one, well, you could see which is the strongest one in here 
today, which is the NASDAQ. Just absolutely fantastic in resistance right now, failing from resistance, getting through the acceleration zones, hitting resistance and backing off. If you're a short-term trader, I mean, this is just unbelievably fantastic uh, information uh, when you look at that. So that is a look at uh, the live SIR live stream, and you can have this right on your charts. Just absolutely uh, fantastic, amazing. Uh, well, here is the, the library, uh, three new videos every week, nine categories, over 600 videos. I'm not going to read it to you. You can read it, but just uh, incredible things. Uh, uh, you can see trader psychology. Um, got lots of great things in there about uh, how uh, you can deal with personal issues that may be getting in your way of success. So just unbelievable stuff, including Future Speak, which we do every Wednesday, our certainly most popular member video. That's uh, what you what's included. Uh, this is the only until March 14th. So this is essentially about two and a half weeks. The final opportunity at this price for all of these great things that you're going to get you saw that $22.50 for a one month trial, quarterly discounts, bigger discounts. Go to asklim.com, top of that main page, and you can sign up right there or questions right to Matt at askslim.com. All right, so now we're going to get into the stock market. Uh, we're going to look at the SPY one to three months, and we're going to look at some interday. Uh, momentum comparisons that I think are really valuable to look at. So let's switch over here as uh, we leave the gold market and just uh, blow this up into the weekly chart for SPY. So for those of you that have been following our analysis, we've been looking for another one of these yellow corrective phases that you see in there where each of those corrective phases gets you moving to the downside. So far, this has not been much of a correction and we've only only really been looking for 7% on the downside during this time frame, which takes you out into the period of the first, second, third week of March right in there. We'll just call it uh, the ideal would be based on what we're looking at in our daily chart, which I'm not going to show you, uh, is it takes it to about March uh, 15th. Uh, we think that this is just the beginning of that right over there. That black arrow that you see right over there says that that was really the first sign of a topping, just like you got in these black arrows right over there where you got declines, one more high, and then the market started to move to the downside. Again, if you're not familiar with our work, the brackets on the bottom are called cycle brackets. They are available on some of the platforms out there. <coughs> Uh, and you, you can certainly use it on Thinkorswim, uh, and if you're a Level 4 member, you get our ch all of these charts. Level 3 members get it in our ranking systems, but they're static charts. Level 4 members put them on their Thinkorswim in live charts. So uh, this is uh, what I consider to be potentially the first leg down in what I think will be a topping process for the stock market. As you could see, uh, we're looking for this to only be down to uh, a level of about 366, which would be about a 7% decline. If it really gets crazy, you know, down to this support level over here, that would be 350. Uh, three, that is 367 right over there, uh, so 357, sorry. So that's really what we're looking for, uh, a decline of some modest amount here over these next several weeks, and then uh, testing those highs are a little better out over here, and we think this is a major bull market top that we're going to be putting in place there uh, in the stock market. These uh, We expect during that period, remember this is a one to three month analysis, that we expect during this period over here, it's going to be led by the recovery stocks that are starting to do so well right now in some specific tech stocks, and uh, RV will be putting its, up some great stuff on there uh, where there are a lot of stocks that really look like they can have some great upside moves during this period. But right now we're focused on here where the downside risk is uh, and we think that we're going to see a move down to about 366, which I think is reasonable and an incredibly small correction uh, if that is what happens. So for you short-term traders, and of course what we did look at was that 15-minute chart uh, where we looked at the, the live chart. If you missed that, please go back and watch that. 
uh, where we talked about the uh, special we're running for level two, where we showed you the uh, SIR live stream. Uh, and what I want to do now is put this chart up. So these are two hour momentum charts that we're looking at right over here. Momentum is key in our opinion, understanding momentum for your directional decisions, understanding momentum for which of the strongest and weakest of the indexes I think are very important. What we're looking at here is SPY, QQQ and IWM on two hour charts. Our interday directional decisions are really focused on two hour charts. And I want you to see on the bottom, the slim ribbon PO, on the top is the slim ribbon, and the slim ribbon colors the bars. And these are hike and ashy bars, which give you another sense of momentum built into them. What I want you to see is that momentum, at, which was positive all through this period over here, has been chopping between neutral and negative. And even though we're getting an upside rebound today in the stock market, momentum has turned negative on this key indicator right over here and right over here. Momentum on negative on all of them. Look where the momentum turned negative right over here in the QQQ. And you have this giant decline that you see right over there. Now, because the SPY was stronger, it's just now turning negative. And one of the key things what happens is that the, the uh, slim ribbon becomes resistance. And you can see as it moves up towards that slim ribbon and these indicators, it becomes resistance. Very clear. And now what we're looking at is negative momentum right in here on these two hour charts. Very, very key. We run the two hour charts uh, live on our chart streams uh, for you to see. And uh, I think that they'll be very, very helpful to you. So that's for level three members to get these running live on your chart streams all the time. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, I thought, important to show you uh, as we're looking at what has changed in here and how even though we're getting a rally here on Friday, the momentum conditions are now turning negative. And that says, look for these rallies to fail when uh, you see that. So we're looking only at the highest probabilities, of course. When we look at that, there, of course, is your weekly chart, which says, like we're looking at, that these rallies are going to fail and there is significant downside potential here over these next few weeks. And what we think is, it's interesting, I say significant. Well, significant takes it down 7% from the high. Uh, but uh, overall, it's really not a big correction in the big picture uh, that we're looking for right there. So uh, how do you like that? I thought it was incredible information that we have shared with you here, uh, looking at uh, the um, uh, at the stock market and the SPY. Went black there for a second. I don't like that. That's it for the show. I hope this was absolutely amazing. If you're only watching the end of the show and didn't see all the other stuff, well, it was jam-packed. Uh, we gave analysis in here on the uh, interest rates and TLT, uh, also on uh, gold, also on the U.S. dollar, and here the stock market and all of that in this brief period of time that we bring to you. Who else brings you this kind of depth? Well, I'll tell you why, because your success is our success. If we're not bringing you valuable stuff, you're not going to come. You're not going to subscribe, and your subscription is what keeps us going. We have a big team and uh, really want you to take these specials. It's so helpful to us. Uh, I want you to be so unbelievably careful. It is so crazy out there. And we're always wishing you great trading.